So welcome back, everybody. This is episode eight, and it's going to be, I believe, our last episode before um, Christmas. So Merry Christmas, everybody. Uh, we'll see you soon thereafter, and I hope you have a wonderful and safe Christmas holiday season. Um, so episode eight is going to be on our fixtures, and uh, I've done a lot of talking about them uh, in passing through some of the, the videos that I've done, but I'd like to show you exactly what we've got built and explain how they're going to work and uh, give you an idea of basically where we're at with the uh, rebuild of Hawker Typhoon JP843 in that regard. So the best place to start is the forward monocoque section, which is this one. And I'm sure you guys have seen it in um, social media posts, in some of the video episodes, and just in general discussion when I was talking about uh, producing some of the frame segments, like this guy here at frame JK. And we've got uh, frame A set up in here. I had to do some trimming on it. So all of that stuff is done now. Um, but I want to take you through this section of the build because there's some questions about it and uh, and a lot of interest in what we've done here. So basically the whole frame system works on a spine and the spine is this, uh, what it is, is a six by six square, six inch by six inch square beam and it runs from back here just aft of frame, uh, frame K and frame L would be here for the rear monocoque. So this is the transport joint on the Typhoon and the forward monocoque starts here at frame K and uh, all the way forward to the front ring, which is this guy here. And you can see, if you look at a lot of Typhoon pictures, you can see just behind the cockpit, there's a skin, um, the skin starts for the monocoque and you can see this, I think it was like a eight and a half or nine degree uh, angle there. So it'll really help you identify that. Forward of that is uh, cockpit side panels and things like that. So the spine is supported by two legs. It's uh, both bolted and uh, basically clamped to it very rigid structure uh, but we also have this uh, a tension rod that goes through here it's not in place right now but uh, it comes through this hole there's a nut on the end and it runs all the way down under the beam to this point here and it's supported underneath this round bar and then there'd be a turnbuckle and then the same thing a rod supported under here all the way to the other end where there's a nut placed on the rod the turnbuckle can then be tensioned or tightened and it'll be allowed to take up any load that's put on this beam from the weight of the fixture itself and um, possibly or potentially a technician inside when we're pulling the frame segments apart um, to, to get the monocoque off after it's complete. So it'll prevent deflection of the beam or allow for adjustment to prevent deflection of the beam under load. So beyond that, every frame, as you look down the fuselage here, these are all station plates. There's only a couple actual Typhoon frames in place right now, but these quarter inch 6061 T6 aluminum station plates were routed out and um, they hold the positions of each of these frames. Some more complex than others. You can see frame A is a double frame, so there's two plates. Uh, you don't have them in here right now, but there's spacers that go in between to make sure these are held to the factory dimension apart from each other. And these all hold the frame segments in the correct location for drilling and assembly as we're building the monocoque. But those station plates are held to the spine by a system of angles and uh, the station plate supports are all steel angles that have been either bolted or welded up. They're all uh, drawn out and proven in CAD and they actually attach by primarily one bolt. So there's one large bolt and it's on a conical washer and threaded into the beam and then it has four cap screws that are here for adjustment. There's lock nuts on them as well and they will help, they'll allow us to adjust each one of these station plate supports uh, sideways this way and forwards this way. Now we need more adjustment than that to make sure that we can be truly accurate and we also have, every one of them has this guy and this one is just a small angle. It's bolted directly to the spine. And again, it has two, uh, two cap screws 
and it'll allow us to pivot each frame in that way. So there's really quite a bit of adjustment for every frame segment, um, but it allows us very, very accurate ways to dial in each frame and make sure they're perfectly true and exactly as the manufacturer designed them to be. So from there, uh, this one's a little bit more complex because it was a, actually a, a two piece, uh, two welded assembly pieces, whereas these ones are individual um, for the most part. That's a bad example too. <laughs> these ones are vertical angles and horizontal angles uh, with one little welded plate to make it wider for our cap screw adjustments. Uh, do pardon the stringers there, those are all the fuselage stringers uh, and some of the wing ones, and it's just a nice safe place to store them right now. So once those are assembled, all the whole locations for these are uh, drilled in accordance with the CAD model that Bruce built and they line up with the CNC routed station plates. So they bolt on there quite nicely, they all follow, uh, fall in and are very easy to make sure that all four segments of the fuselage frames are in the correct location to each other and, uh, and true to each other, I suppose. So we have the proper frame shape, which is excellent, but then we have to look at all those adjustments on each of the station plate uh, supports and start dialing those in. So with the Typhoon, every frame is perpendicular to the flight line of the aircraft, which is probably pretty standard in a lot of aircraft, but it's important to know that when we're dialing this in. So we'll first adjust them vertically, make sure they're true, and then we'll start to adjust them fore and aft, um, or sorry, not fore and aft, but then we'll start to make sure they're also square to each other and verify the spacing and shim if absolutely needed, very unlikely, but absolutely needed, and be ready to start assembling from there. It's gonna take a while. There's a lot of uh, finicky work to get this thing dialed in, but it, it will be a very, very nice fixture and produce a very nice product. Once we have the frames assembled, we have the skins and the stringers installed, we're gonna have this uh, tube, basically, that has to come off of here. And there's a lot of structure and a lot of equipment that's inside there. So it all has to come apart. And Bruce was excellent when he designed this because he knew that we're gonna have to extract every one of these pieces without damaging anything and with clearance. So he did a lot of work to make sure that was possible. And every one of these assemblies can come apart We'll have to crawl in there and unbolt them all, but they'll come in pieces and um, we'll be able to remove piece by piece all of the internal structure and be left with just a, a spine and likely a support at either end, uh, fairly loosely attached because the structure will be able to sustain itself at that point. Um, with that, we can then remove a set of legs and um, let me get down to the, the other end here and I'll show you. This is easier to move. So we'll remove a set of legs and we will place a steel bar down here and it'll allow us to use this set of legs as a fulcrum and lift the front end. So as long as we have weight on the steel bar back here, we'll be able to lift the entire spine with no support on the front and we'll have a couple guys and we'll slide the monocoque section forwards off of the spine. And uh, I guess at that point it's just disassembly of the the fixture for the monocoque section because it won't be needed at that point and it'll make room for uh, what will likely be the wing fixture that we're going to be building. So there's our forward monocoque fixture. Uh, hopefully that answers some of the questions that have popped up for this guy and uh, gives you guys a better idea of how it's put together, how it's going to come apart and how it's going to hold, um, correctly hold and correctly support the components as we assemble the forward monocoque section for JPA-43. Now our next fixture that we've got uh, complete here is the radiator fairing fixture and this thing is amazing <laughs> because the Typhoon is so well known by its massive chin radiator. It's really something to stand beside this and, and 
get a feel for the size um, of this assembly uh, with the fixture. So the fixture is very much the same as the monocoque in the fact that it uses uh, station plates, it uses a spine, but in this case we've got a rotisserie. So here it is. Again, you guys have probably seen this either in the background or on social media posts. It's quite an assembly and uh, really impressive. So this was another part. Matt Myers did our design I mentioned earlier on the, um, the main frames for the radiator fairing. But he also did our fixture and station plates and they're absolutely beautiful. This one is a rotisserie. It's just at the perfect height to work on and uh, we can rotate this 360 degrees so that we can get through it and work at any angle. We can lock it in place. Just a beautiful, beautiful fixture. It, uh, it does have a little bit of a difference from the monocoque in that this one was just designed with a bit of welding involved. So there's a couple main brackets. The upper one here which uh, gives us our uh, uh, bolt locations to attach the radiator fairing to the uh, forward structure of the Typhoon um, and a lower assembly that spaces out correctly. Actually both of these space out correctly. The actual location where the radiator sits which is here. There's a, approximately a two degree angle I believe in here and it's very critical that we hold that correctly when we're skinning this. Uh, the spine itself is all uh, machined. It's got machine points along it to hold everything true um, and in their correct locations. Station plates are uh, calculated based on those whole locations and hold the radiator fairing stations in their correct spot. Uh, as you can see we've got uh, some already uh, some parts already produced here. Uh, some of the main frames are built. Not all of them. We're missing three back here at the moment. Um, but uh, we're getting along in this one pretty well and it'll be nice to start getting into some of the crazy crazy curves that go into the, the skinning of this and uh, production. Uh, post frame production. So there's not too much more on this. It, it really does operate in the same manner as our monocoque fixture. It, uh, it's a, a rotisserie but it's got two points on it. One point will come off. We'll unboint, <laughs> unboint. <laughs> we'll unbolt a lot of the uh, structure inside. The station plates remove those internally when it's complete and we'll just uh, lift it up and we'll slide the radiator fairing right off of that spine and uh, be done with that aspect of the project as well. So another beautiful fixture and uh, another part of the project well on its way here. Without a doubt, those two fixtures have seen the most attention so far in the build. Uh, we've, we've made better progress than I thought we would in the last couple of years, and um, the development of both of those areas has gone really, really well, albeit some teething problems here and there. Um, in addition to these, there's other, uh, I'd even say larger, mostly heavier fixtures that I've been working on here in the shop because they're going to be needed and we're slowly progressing to construction on those areas, so we should also make sure that when we are ready material wise and uh, drawing wise that we're able to produce the part having a fixture ready to go. So the next fixture I'm going to discuss is the uh, the cockpit fixture and this is something that's now nearly complete minus the hard points um, but it's something to see. So this is the cockpit fixture. It's a um, it's a T-slot table. It measures about 50 some odd inches wide and it's approximately 8 feet long. Uh, it's not solid steel, but it is very heavily reinforced. Uh, I believe, I had to build the stand for this guy, but I believe the all-up weight on it is approximately 6,000 pounds. So it's about the weight of two cars and uh, even though there is a set of wheels on it that I can lower it down onto the wheels and move it around, it's still quite a thing to push around the shop. Um, ultimately though, it should stay here. It can move if we need to, but it should stay here and it's got feet that we can level and make sure everything is true and it, it won't budge. Uh, so you can see in the background here, there's been some information on this in the previous episodes, that the cockpit structure for the Typhoon is tubular and um, the tubes are also back there. They're not squared yet but most are cut to rough length for, uh, for our rebuild process. Uh, the, the key here with this fixture is we need hard points for the main spars and there's uh, eight main spar fittings that you can see. Let me go over here. There are eight main spar fittings 
This is the front spar. This is the upper upper spar fitting, lower spar fitting for the front spar. Same with the rear. This is the rear spar, upper and lower fittings. This is the forward engine mount over here, and the rear engine mounts right directly on the spar, which, as I mentioned previously, were a result of uh, or resulted in a lot of vibration transmitted right through into the pilot's derriere. Um, so yes, so those hard points are critical. Those are our main fastening points that need to be built for the jig. The spar carry throughs, those three inch tubes that run through there, they are gonna be first in the fixture and will be held and supported very rigidly on this table. Now this isn't a, uh, a surface plate or a, a machinist type table. It's a T-slot table and I believe it was meant for welding. I, uh, I picked it up at an auction, luckily, and all I had to do was build a, uh, a support for it. So it didn't cost too much, and I was really fortunate to get a hold of it. So what we're going to do is we'll build the hard points for the spar pickups, and we're also going to build um, more hard points that mount to these. These are uh, machined angle plates for the, I'm going to use them at the back end, the two taller ones. They're 36 inches tall and they're gonna support our mounts for the integrating structure where they attach to joints L and M at the rear of the cockpit. It's another crucial area, so we'll be able to support all of that critical structure with some of this. Now, I'm still working on the forward spar pickup points, um, and I'm, I think I'm gonna use these. I'm not too sure yet, but I think I'm gonna use those. So we'll have all of our hard points built in there, and once we have all of that set up, um, I'll get it all kind of dialed in, you know, within an eighth of an inch or so. And we're going to have E3D Technology, our sponsor from Langley, British Columbia, they're going to come over and they're going to dial it in with their technology and expertise and make sure that we're absolutely spot on to start assembling some of these components. And uh, then we'll get underway with the build of the Hawker Typhoon cockpit section. Now another uh, assembly fixture that we've built and really hasn't had any attention since I did it, it's basically just a frame. And uh, this is our flight control fixture. It's gonna cover off our elevators, our rudder, our fin will be assembled in it, flaps, ailerons, and likely the wingtip as well. It's designed to fit all of those components, but it will need a bunch of hard points and, and modification to make it fit all of those. So this is it here. This is, uh, it's just a big rectangular frame. It's got its own stand and it's got a, uh, this is a, one of our, well, this is our aileron here. Um, it's got this bar here that's removable to give us more room for things like the tail planes and, uh, and larger um, cord items. Uh, but it's, it's pretty basic right now. The hard points are gonna be anywhere, depending on what the item is. The, uh, the wing tip is only maybe half the aileron, so we can al always put a vertical one into. It's really a fixture in progress, and there's not been a lot of, uh, of thought put into it recently because we just needed a frame, and we had some materials left over when I was building some of the other fixtures here. So this one's really nice. It's quite rigid. Uh, the only issue that I had when I was producing it was the I-beams. I-beams are excellent to prevent uh, deflection but torsion with them is a bit of an issue, and given the height of this guy, uh, it tended to twist quite a bit. So on either side of this, I welded in angle uh, supports, and now it's incredibly rigid. It'll uh, take whatever we need to put at it, and these are all light structures that are gonna be built in it anyway. So it'll be uh, quite well suited for just that. Now, something that's quite recent to, uh, to the shop here, and a bit of a pain in the butt because they're so monstrous, they're right behind me. These are more uh, machined steel angle plates. They're eight feet tall, they're five feet front to back, and they're made up of inch and a half and two inch steel. Um, very, very heavy duty, but uh, again, they're gonna be an excellent component for our next major fixture, and likely our last major fixture, which is that of the uh, wing fixture for the Hawker Typhoon, which is, I'm really excited to see it go together. So it's kind of hard to see the scale of them in here. 
Um, but rest assured, uh, they actually, I thought they were 1,400 pounds each when I first picked them up, but they're 1,800 pounds, so just under a ton apiece. And we've got two of them. They'll be the end plates on the Typhoon's wing construction fixture and uh, likely have two beams, one girder style beam that runs across the top between the two of them and one I-beam or similar that runs along the bottom. I haven't decided yet on that. We're still a ways away but this was uh, too good of an opportunity to pass up and get these. They, uh, they'll likely save us a lot of money and be way overkill. So uh, as you can see, they're all drilled. We'll be able to make whatever kind of uh, mounts we require for the wing fixture on there. And um, I don't think we'll have any issues with deflection <laughs> on these guys. So they'll likely sit here and hold the floor down for a little while while we work on all of the other projects that we've got going on in the shop. But it gives us uh, a firm foundation of the beginnings of the wing build for Typhoon JP843. So there you go guys, that's our giant sea of yellow here in the shop right now. Uh, we've got either complete or underway almost all of our fixtures to build Hawker Typhoon JP843 here at Typhoon Legacy. So a very, very good start and uh, well in advance of where I expected that we'd be at this point in time. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you've got any questions on anything I discussed here, I'm happy to hear it, happy to uh, comment back and looking forward to talking to you guys. Thank you so much for your support. If you're able to, please head over to our uh, paid support or our paid video channel and subscribe for a few dollars a month. It'll all directly go to the work that we're doing here to get JP843 back in the air. Thank you guys so much. Merry Christmas. Take care.